Hey, Ruthann. Hey, Troy. It's uh, Toxedial time. It's Toxedial time. It's Toxedial time. <laughs> what was that from? The Mickey Mouse Club or something? <laughs> um, anyways, today we've got a guest. What's the guest name? Um, I'm saying Avi, but it might be pronounced differently. Avi. Avi, Avi. Okay. Well, you can ask him. You can introduce him. And then we've got a couple other things. Where, and he's going to be talking to us about the future of trucking and uh, uh, numerous things that he, he wants to talk about. And we're going to have him on. And we, uh, in fact, what, why don't you just introduce what he is? He's the... He's the CEO of Maven Machines. Of Maven Machines. He's the CEO. And he's here to talk about truckers' futures, mainly. And then also we got a couple things we want to talk about. You, there was a, a horrible crash in the last couple of days in Mexico. And I know we don't normally get into like crashes in other countries, but it had like over 200 migrants in a, in a tractor trailer oh and gosh. 54 were killed Oh my gosh. and over a hundred were injured. I know it's this, it's horrible. And so we want to talk about that. Um, we also will be talking about a, uh, Trucker was driving down the road and had road rage from a car. The guy pulled out a BB gun and shot him in the face while he was driving his tractor trailer. We'll be talking about that today. And uh, a few other things. Some new pilots opened up across the country. We want to mention those. And uh, if I have time, if not, we'll be doing it on another podcast. Dug up an old article about trucker pay when it comes to a lawsuit with a big giant trucking company, the way they were paying their truckers. Ooh. And it was $28 million. And it says they quietly paid out. They quietly agreed to pay out. Ooh. But before we pull this yeah, a young gentleman on our podcast, why don't we go ahead and mention J.J. Keller. J.J. Keller. Call him at 888-601-2017. They are what I officially call the trucker secretary. There's lots of new stuff going on with the taxes this year i noticed so you need to speak to them so you can get your peer diem yeah and that and also you, you got new dot paperwork to file you got all kind of things to file um and you're not organized jj keller whether you're a one truck stop or a one truck chuck company or you have several trucks call jj keller again 888-601-2017 ruthann give me that number and i will dial away here for mr avi Hello, this is Avi. Hi, Avi. This is Ruthann. How are you? Hi, Ruthann. Good. Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. So, Avi, we, we uh, got a message from your manager or publisher or whatever he is. Ryan Media. Uh, uh, Ryan? Yeah. yeah. And he said yeah. you wanted to come on the show and talk about the yeah. uh, future of drivers. And uh, yeah. we've got a couple things here we want to talk to you about. We're interested in hearing from you. Um, but if you wanted to go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself real quick, uh, and then we'll go ahead and move on. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm Avi Geller. I'm the founder and CEO of Maven, uh, Maven Machines, commonly just referred to as Maven. Um, we are a uh, technology vendor in the trucking space uh, with a um, fleet management platform to serve trucking companies and with a, a very broad and, and wide range of products to help trucking companies run more profitably, more efficiently, to help drivers be more successful with the technology. And it's everything from ELD to you know real-time messaging uh, to safety technology, um, dispatching, route planning, route optimization, things like that. So would this go also with uh, like an owner operator that might have only um, an under five fleet? Yes, exactly. So we have a, a number of customers in that uh, category um, where they take our device and, and plug it into the data port of the vehicle, and then we we help them. We, we do all the ELD, um, and um, and if it's just a single truck, they'll typically ELD is really all they need. And if it's a smaller fleet, they also have a uh, management portal to track. Uh, all kinds of engine data and location data and do messaging uh, with your with your other drivers and things like that. Cool. Awesome. So let's move on here. Um, uh, it's, how do you spell, pronounce his name? Avi? Avi. Avi. That's right. And actually, Ruth Ann won that argument because I said Avi, and <laughs> she said Avi. 
Right. Yeah, she's usually wrong, but <laughs> but so so I'm reading about I'm reading what your your uh, uh, what is he a publicist? Yeah, I would say he's a publicist. He's a he's the media man. Okay, he he wrote that you wanted to talk about the driver shortage, and uh, in the trucking industry, it, he says it's you know been going on for some time now. The driver shortage ranks as the number one issue in the trucking industry, and again this year, according to ATRI's top industry issue report, Avi Geller, CEO and founder of Maven Machines, believes the industry as a whole needs to become more driver centric. So go ahead and tell us about that. What do you mean by driver centric? Yeah, so that, that's exactly right, and yes, that's true. The, the research done by Atri, um, which surveys uh, a large number of people from drivers to various managers um, and people involved in running a trucking company. Um, and across the board, the number one issue was uh, was the driver shortage. Um, and related to that is driver retention and driver satisfaction. And there's a lot of factors that go into that. But, you know, the the lifeblood of the industry is is truck drivers. I mean, our drivers are, are everything for this industry. And um, we're, we're lacking them pretty significantly and at a growing rate. And there's a lot of factors to that. Um, but, um, you know, some of the factors do include things like uh, driver pay um, and other factors do include the technology that uh, services those drivers. I mean, as the, the you know, ELD mandate has come into effect uh, over the last uh, four years and increasingly there's, there's additional technologies um, it is really important that these serve the driver's needs and not just uh, fleet's needs. Um, the user interfaces need to be uh, very intuitive, um, easy to learn, and easy to use and, and reliable um, because it is extremely painful for a driver if they're having issues with using their ELD or doing a pre-trip or post-trip inspection or passing an inspection by an inspection officer on the side of the road um, or any of the other things that you need to do. And if something goes wrong with uh, the technology, it could put you out of service for 10 hours at a time or even days at a time. And as we all know, you know, drivers, you know, they, they work to drive and, and they drive to work. So it's, uh, it's, it's really critical that um, the technology is serving their needs. You know, you know, I, I actually agree with that. The, uh, it's you're, what you're really saying is we need. I don't want to say technology for dummies, but like you know how Mac always said for dummies. But in a in a sense, it has to be simplified. I, Ruth, Ann, do you remember when back in the day when you you had to have a truck driver? I mean, I'm talking 20 years ago, and you you would tell them, hey, stop on the side, stop at a truck stop, go in and get a fax, and we need to you need to sign a few releases for us. Yeah. And what was their reaction? What's a fax? Yeah. And this was 20 yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. and then as the digital era became newer, right signature, e-signatures, all those signatures, a lot of them kind of missed the boat because I've had truck drivers over the years saying, I this I can't figure this thing out. You know, and so if the technology is is complex, it frustrates truck drivers. And the first thing they're going to do is just say to hell with it and walk away to the guy that actually can simplify. The people that simplified drivers, especially when they were hiring them back in the day, they were the ones that always won. Right, right. Even now with the phones, some of these phones, we were just talking to a driver not long ago and we're asking him to do something. And he's like, I don't know, I got this older phone. And we're like looking at each other like, uh oh, the older phone, which one is it? You know, we, you have no idea. I mean, there's, we have a, a friend of ours in church that literally just gave up his flip phone finally. And he's so mad yeah, because right. he don't have his, he has no idea how to work this new phone. Yeah, but and texting on those old phones, you had to click through each damn letter yeah. to get the right letter. One, two, it's, three to the it, M. One, it, two, three. Yeah, it's <laughs> actually it was actually harder to text with them, but they prefer them, those old yeah. timers. It's so, funny. Well, a lot of times they don't text that much. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And the drivers and there's different kinds of drivers across the uh, the population, but I mean they their their livelihood is driving the vehicle. They're experts at driving an eighty thousand pound tractor trailer down a public road. They're not technologists. You know, some, some, of course, are more than others, but that's not the, the core work that they're doing. And there's too many technology solutions that require a sophisticated knowledge of the system, and, but that's not what, they, what they're there to do. 
So we put a lot of effort into our user interfaces where there's typically one big blue button on the screen that is the thing you're supposed to do when the time is right, whether that's arriving at a stop, taking, you know, if you're going to scan a document like a bill of lading, it's very, you know, there's one button, scan, boom, you see the high quality uh, image. It's already populated with uh, the bill of lading number and other relevant information, and you see, and it goes right uh, automatically to the fleet um, and ultimately the shipper and constantly. Um, that kind of thing, we put a lot of effort in, so the drivers don't have to worry about it. And if there's 20 times a day between changing duty statuses, pre-trip, post-trip, uh, fueling, all the things that you do, if you simplify 20 times a day something you know somewhat small, but it makes a difference, that adds up very quickly. Yeah, so really what you're saying is the guy with the technology that's simple is going to win, win, win. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's um, it's so you know complex that it that you know that it ends up being simple, uh, or it, it can be very difficult to make it simple. But we put the work in to do so, so it's almost magical for the driver. So, have you had the privilege at all to being in any of these newer autonomous trucks? I mean, I know the technology isn't there yet, but have you? I know there's a big there's a big thing going on, especially in Texas between San Antonio, Houston, and Dallas, and there's several trucking companies involved where there's a tech, a, a, a tech, a driver, and a mechanic all riding in the truck back and forth on these runs. And I was just curious about the technology there itself because if if these trucks, now, again, we, who knows if it's ever going to be full autonomous. I know they're spending a lot of money to get there, and if it does get there, that's going to be the same thing. The, the company that uh, makes it really simple for the driver because the driver is going to have to be in the truck. Is that correct? That is exactly right. So yeah, I had I have had the opportunity to to go on drives in, in multiple te- autonomous trucks, whether it's fully autonomous or platooning. Um, and there's always that debate: well, is there even going to be a driver in the cab at all? Um, and I very much believe there will always be a, a driver, or effectively a you know a pilot or a captain, um, in the cab at all times. And then if if that's the case, then you get into the question of well, what what is that work experience like? for that uh, individual and you're exactly right if they have you know if, if they're running a spaceship with 5000 knobs and it takes a, uh, years of training to figure it out and it's very easy to make mistakes that's just not going to that's not going to work well it needs to be very intuitive um, and straightforward for the driver so you have actually had the privilege of driving in the autonomous vehicles yourself and what what brands can we ask like what brands are really um, leading the pack at this time? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't consider myself enough of an expert to, to give a, you know, a, a meaningful answer to that. Um, I've had a chance at various conferences to go in, in rides with a few different ones. Um, I, they all seem pretty similar um, uh, in terms of where they're at. They're all able to do autonomous, you know, whether it's a platoon solution or, a, uh, or, or, or fully autonomous, whatever they're aiming for, they're able to do it. Uh, from what I can see um, as a layman in the industry, in that segment of the industry, they're really good at the ideal use case, a nice sunny day uh, with good weather, uh, you know, not, not overly uh, crowded roads, things like that. They can do flawlessly. And I think the challenge in the space is, is what they would call the long tail of, of potential things that can come up periodically um, that they have to uh, account for. Um, and I think they're all working through that. What about snow-covered roads? How are they doing on that? Exactly. That's the challenge. When it when you have bad weather, especially snow, snow will quickly cover up sensors. Um, and so if you have a camera or a LIDAR or some kind of sensor and it gets covered up in snow, you're, you're instantly completely unable to be uh, any kind of autonomous. So so things like that have to be handled. So are, are most of these trucks working off the white line on the side of the road? That's what I've always been told, that they, they go by the line on the side. of the, In fact, Ruth Ann and I have a, a Honda Passport that's um, driver assist, and, and yeah. sometimes we can go four or five miles without even touching the steering wheel, but most of the time it, it goes off the road. Yeah, it, it's incredible technology, and you're right. It, it's the white line, but it's a lot more than that. So all the sensors are taking a... Um, kind of painting a picture of the entire environment. So the vehicle in front, you know, all the vehicles in front or, or to the side of, uh, of the truck, uh, signs, um, 
um, you know, anything that, that could come come in the way of the road. And the white line is one in the, you know, both the white line on the side of the road as well as the lane dividers. Um, all of these things are being, um, you know, are, are being sensed by the sensors. And then uh, the artificial intelligence and the software trying to identify them accurately um, so you don't get confused if there's a construction zone or things like that where the lines change. Um, and then, of course, making the right driving decisions autonomously of, you know, speed up, slow down, change lanes. Well, I could tell you my car gets confused because there's plenty of times where all of a sudden it just breaks on me and I'll be going down and all of a sudden it goes, Err! And it, it, it beeps at me and our daughter will say, why did it just do that? And I'm like, I have no idea. It just decided it was going to break. Luckily yeah, enough, I mean, there's no one behind me when it will do that to where it would just, but it has, it just gone in and hit the brake on me because it thought that, you know, I was coming hey, up too close you, to something. Earth and, you know, also I've had truck drivers tell me, especially, and I, and this was like, I'm pretty sure on Freightliners, um, a lot of them told me where the autonomous braking system will go off at a bridge, you know, like all of a sudden just for no reason. And, and I, wow. and I'm saying, to, I'm, I'm saying to myself, boy, just imagine if it was slippery weather mm-hmm. or, you know, and it just all of a sudden hit the brakes real hard. Next thing you know, you're going into a jackknife. I don't know. Is that possible? You tell us, Avi. Yeah, that's, that's extremely possible. That kind of, and that's one of the concerns. Um, of course, there's a lot of work being done to make, to, to make that impossible. Um, but, you know, another example of autonomous, I live in Pittsburgh, it's where we're based. And uh, as U- Uber was developing their autonomous technology, I had a chance multiple times uh, to go on, on rides in, uh, in their cars. Um, and talking to their head of engineering, explaining to me that the, the system is having a hard time telling the difference between a uh, person on a bicycle and a woman walking with a dress. Um, so a pedestrian versus a bicycle and one is supposed to drive on the road on the bicycle and one is not, and, and it needs to know the difference. So it, it can take the proper course of action, whether it's to move over or stop, you know, and that's where, that's just one example of this long tail of use cases or edge cases. Yeah, I Another would say. one is a, a plastic bag flying across the road, you know, in the wind. How can it detect what that is? It's easy for us as humans, but it's really hard for a software system to understand that. Well, I would say definitely with like a lady walking or even a gentleman, you know, sometimes the the clothing that they're wearing might have certain print on it, like um, a sundress that might have flowers and stuff on them. They might not realize it's a person actually walking if they see a big sundress with yeah. flowers. That's right. And it doesn't know what it, what it is, um, but it needs to. You know, it's uh, the human brain is remarkable at identifying uh, elements of the surroundings. And, uh, and getting the software system to do that as well is a big challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say definitely. I mean, I don't. I mean, I think that the technology with software has definitely improved tremendously over the years. I just don't think society as a whole is quite ready for a system that can drive your car completely on its own. I don't think that we are ready for that because there's two uh, it's not just robocop it's 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 the will smith movie ai AI. you know there's too much that we don't want them getting that much control over us i'm sorry i don't want i mean my car now as it is it it pushes the limits where i don't even use half the, the the abilities that i could probably use with it just because that's I'm too controlling. I don't want but it. You know what would be cool though if if it was fully AI and like say we were out for a hike somewhere and we were like eight miles away and we were just too tired to walk back. Just call the car. But you know, that's the only, tell it to come get you. That's the only thing I would say it would be nice is like if we if we like say we kayaked down the river and you know you usually have to have two cars one to drop you off one to pick you up. That would be cool in yeah, that situation. Yeah. But that's it. That's that's it. I. I don't think draw I, the line there. I draw the line at picking me up. When, yeah. it, when, it, when it's <laughs> able to get to, you know, keep you from being lazy. Other than that, you're, you're, no. you don't want the, when I'm in the car, I want the control. <laughs> no, I think it's a very, it's a very good point is, is, you know, how society is developing with or handling all the technology that's out there. That's increasingly doing things for us um, is, is a big question. Are people, do people really want their lives to just be, kind of live by the technology um, as opposed to having control. That's a really, really important question. 
Yeah, I I hundred percent agree. And you, th- well, I here's what I think. This is it's like anything else. It, you know, like a lot of truck drivers out there, they talk about the new generation, right, and the way they do things, and things are different than the older guys. You look at my generation. I don't know how old you are, Avi, but. You go back where people love muscle cars. Like, I'm from the generation where we loved our freaking muscle cars, and we loved to do donuts in the parking lot, and we wanted to be able to control that car, shift gears and bang gears, do all that stuff, burnouts, where yeah. we didn't want anybody ever controlling the way we do. In fact, we Americans love their cars. We love to go bye-bye and go for a drive and, and feel that. You know what I mean? Like, you take a, a BMW versus, um, 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 a, I don't know, a a little Toyota Corolla and just the feel on a, on a windy road with, with the technology and like a Corvette or a BMW, the way it's real tight and just the feeling it gets you high driving that thing. How the hell would you even know the damn difference? You know what I mean? If, if it's driving itself, whether it's a Corolla or it's a BMW, except for maybe the luxuries inside of it. Other than that, I mean, I, I just don't see the fun in driving that much at, with a fully autonomous vehicle. I completely agree. And, and I did grow up in the generation of, you know, working on my own cars. And I had a, a 72 Nova growing up that I loved to, to work on and, and soup up and, and drive around and really control it. And, and it was a lot of fun. And, and I agree. I think the newer generations, from what I can tell, they don't really have the desire that or that sense of freedom you get with right. getting your first car. I, I've heard a lot of, you know, 16, 17 year olds aren't interested in getting their driver's license. That blows me away. I mean, I, yeah. I couldn't wait. I was counting the days down until my 16th birthday me to get too. my license as were all of my friends. Yep. So no. there's clearly a, a big change in, in society with the, the younger generations that is going to have to be understood. Yeah. We've, we've made them lazy. Honestly, <laughs> we, we, we've, we've made all of our children to the point where they don't want to do that stuff because they know mom or dad will just take them and do what they need to get done. And yeah, yeah. it's, 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 they call it I have a friend that's a, um, psychologist of some sort. She's a counselor. And she said the biggest problem with the generation right now of the, um, 16 to 25 year olds, basically that that generation is it an X or whatever, whatever generation it is right now that is in that time frame, they have the hardest time saying, I am at fault with this. I won't, they refuse to say that there is an issue of what they plan on doing or how they're doing it or any, they'd sooner blame their parent than anything yep. else. Well, see, that's my whole point. That generation is the generation that's going to accept all the autonomous. Mm -hmm. It's going to take, it's going to take time for the, our generation to go out fighting, you know, and you know, by the time we're in diapers, I guess, as an old age, we're going to be 100% at the mercy of, of, of everybody under us. And they're going to be in, it's going to be like the Jetsons, you know. We're going to have a robot coming over there and cleaning yeah. their butt. It's it's going to be. It, it really does seem like like AI. It's mm-hmm. going to be. It's it's here. It's on the brink. Everybody wants it, and um, it just takes the fun out of things. But I guess if you're bred into that, you're gonna like everybody's saying they're gonna accept it. Mm-hmm. So it is mm-hmm. what it is. I don't want a Rosie. Yeah, it's it's amazing. You see uh, the younger generation today. You know, when I grew up, we went out in the street and we played uh, baseball or soccer or on the playground and and we hung out. Mm-hmm. The, this generation, a lot of times, they each stay in their own rooms and they they hang out virtually on, mm-hmm. on games and other things. Cave they're not trolls. physically together and they're they're happy to do so. Yep, I call them that's, cave uh, trolls. That's interesting. Yeah, I... I uh... I, it blows my mind too. So, hey, let's move on. I got another question for you. Something that was written down here. Um, I'm supposed to ask you why is 2022 going to be the year of the driver? Oh yeah. Um, so I mean, it comes back to the number one issue facing the industry is the driver shortage, and it seems like finally, as a result of the of, you know this incredible shortage, drivers are being compensated significantly better than they were previously there's a lot more talk around uh, additional services for drivers at a better quality of life whether it be the technology or parking or other services at truck stops uh, you know, showers and, and other other things like that um, and and really making them more efficient and, and from the technology side 
Uh, how can you get drivers home more often? How can you keep drivers? How can you get drivers, you know, paid more with whether it's more miles or less uh, downtime, um, less detention time? All of these things are the main focuses of the industry uh, to drive the industry forward. So it's really everything is focused around the drivers who are moving the industry. Yeah, I I know. I'll tell you as far as like home time and that goes. I mean, I remember years ago companies were talking about trying to just regionalize everything instead of it being, you know, cross country driving, stay or you know, coast to coast type of driving where a driver can't get home that much. And that's one of the, the you know, the two biggest reasons a truck driver doesn't last is driver pay and their home and getting home. And so a lot of them had figured, well, if we regionalize everything, you know, where everybody's running just their region, they'll be at least home on the weekends or even every other day, and some in some cases home every day, which would cut down on the driver turnover itself. Yeah, I mean, there is an element of that. We, we have a lot of customers in the LTL space, and, and we help them do, um, you know, swaps and relays and things like that that allow uh, line haul drivers uh, to come home every night. Um, uh, and, and I think there's, you know, the more that that kind of thing can be done, because you're right, a driver has a much better quality of life typically if they're home every night. And if the technology can enable them to do so and the operations to do so, then everyone uh, benefits. So there's certainly, a, a, you know, some movement there. Okay. So got another question for you. It says, how will the will 5G change the trucking industry and supply chain? Ah, great question. So, I mean, 5G gives you a uh, much higher bandwidth and speed of, of connectivity. Um, and there's areas where that's a bit of an overkill if you're just getting a GPS breadcrumb. Um, but there's areas where it really does have benefit. Autonomous is one. Um, to, to do autonomous technology, you have to have connectivity. Um, and it has to be really high quality and fast. Um, and, and really, it's just anything that has to do with a high amount of data. Um, is where that 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 capability will have a benefit, but autonomous uh, type technologies is clearly the the number one area to benefit. So, what would you suggest being not suggest, but what do you think is going to be the first thing that's going to be the major improvement before the end of the year or at the beginning of the year of next year? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there is going to be a lot of improvements for um, for the driver's quality of life, whether it's getting them home more often, uh, keeping them more productive, and ultimately higher pay as a result, um, allowing them to have better choice and selection over the loads that they're hauling and the work that they do. And I'm hopeful that we are able to attract a younger generation um, and just more people to the industry as a result of all of this. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that that will, ha- that will start to happen in a meaningful way ne- uh, before the end of next year. There's a school that we uh, just interviewed in California, and they actually are teaching the high schoolers yeah. to, they're yeah. doing a CDL program with that, that um, they're hoping to get put across the United States to where there'll be more schools apt to do that, to start getting them more interested in a younger age in becoming truck drivers and doing, you know, at that point, they're just going to be doing more local work, but at least they're getting their foot in the door. And then when they're able to get their CDL and get over the road, they can make that transition much easier. That's a great plan. I mean, if you can't get a CDL until you're 21, then we should do everything possible to attract people at the age of 18 to the industry. And if that means local runs or dock work or other things like that, but you're learning. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then as soon as you get that CDL, you're ready to go. That's mm-hmm. great. There's also a lot of work uh, being done, and, and it seems like it's working to attract more uh, women drivers to the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been an increase in the percentage of drivers that are women um, and other groups as well. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way to earn a living, uh, but there's more work to be needs to be done to, to attract people to it. Yeah, I, and I really, I'm with Ruth Ann. I think the, uh, was in Patterson, California, mm-hmm. was that high school? Patterson High School, I think. They... Uh, it's just like VOAG class, shop class, mechanics, yeah. you know, all that stuff. You know, it's probably should have been introduced years ago if you really yeah. think about it. Because you actually can get your CDL and run intrastate at 18 to up to 20. 
and then twenty one right. till you have to till you can cross state line. So and they they've been talking about lowering the age to eighteen. And me personally, if you want the truth, I don't mind a a, a truck driver. You know, I look at it this way: you can run from El Paso all the way to Lake, to uh, Lake Lake City or Lake Charles, uh, almost to into Louisiana, like yeah. what nine hundred miles. But you, if yeah. you cross the state line, you're illegal. So what 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 sense does that make? You know, you can legally drive in your state, but if you go across the line, you're you're running illegal. I mean, if you can turn 17 and go in the army and die for your country. I personally right. think that you should be able to drive a tractor trailer at 18 years of age. An 18 year old kid has more stamina anyways than, than a, a, a 30 year old guy. So bottom line, I'm all for it. And if they start doing it at the school level, I believe 100% that we would have a great, a great influx or a great, amount of of new drivers and a whole new generation just because of starting it at that level because to be honest with you back in my day um you know it was our grandparents and parents that were able to teach us how to drive a tractor trailer today uncle bob and your dad can't do that you have to go to a trucking school to do that to get into it legally so these these high schools can almost act like dad and your grandfather mentoring you at that age the that's, that's really well said, and, and I agree. I, I think the that law where, you know, interstate, you can drive from 18 to, you know, starting at 18, but interstate, you have to be 21. But, you know, that example of Texas or other larger states, it shows that it doesn't make any sense. And we can come up with much better policies. Maybe there's some kind of probationary li- license for the first few years, and maybe we can leverage technology to really kind of track the performance of a, of a younger driver and make sure that they performing well and safely and kind of earn your stripes and earn a little more, you know, kind of earn your, your freedom, so to speak, um, at the younger age. Um, there's, there's plenty of things we can do to enable, uh, 18 year olds to drive a tractor trailer. And that, that will change the, the, you know, kind of the dynamics of the driver population very quickly. The person that was doing the, um, the schooling, was a person that used to do truck driving schooling and like he's been involved in it. So I think if we had a lot more people that were wanting to go out there and, and, and do this type of schooling and teach these younger kids, that would help a lot because they are being taught by someone that is experienced in every aspect of the trucking industry, not just, you know, someone that never, nothing irritates me more than someone that never did. Like you can't tell me how to raise my kids if you've never had a kid. You can't tell me how to do something if you've never, ever done it. So to right. teach these children, they're going to have that same mindset to where you're going to tell me how to do this, but yet you've never done it yourself. Where, how can you do that? They don't, they need it more simplistic. So if you go in there and you're teaching them it as from a level where, Hey, I did this. I know this is the easiest way to do it. Um, listen to my advice type of situation, you're more apt to get to them because you're coming down and, and showing them that you, you have experience in that, not just a degree in it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, lo- I, I really like the idea of teaching in high school, like you said, similar to a shop class or other classes. And I have to believe even, even today's generation, there's a, there's a number of 18 year olds that would graduate high school and would love the prospect of getting behind the wheel of a tractor trailer and seeing the country. Yeah. I mean, what a, what a great thing to do when you, you know, you you finished high school and you want to get out there into the world. What a great way to do it. Yeah. Because you're Uh, not tied down to uh, a family yet. You are on your own. You can go out there and earn your own money. If you can, like Troy said, if you can go out there and, and go to war, you can go to boot camp. You can go and do all this different stuff. Why can't you go and just drive a tractor trailer? I mean, it's no different. Right. The other thing that makes sense with starting the truckers that young, if you look at kids that are even two and three years old, they pick up on iPhones and galaxies so good. They're they're better than their grandparents at finding. <laughs> it's a truth. It's so true. It's Instantly. the yeah. younger generations that know a lot of the softwares and technologies 10 times more than the older generations anyway. So by the time autonomous comes out, if you have that generation interested, I think that really bringing it all together 
in, integrating it with that generation, it is going to be a lot more simple than trying to take my generation and and making them putting them in autonomous trucks. One hundred percent. I agree. I completely agree. And also, today's trucks are you know significantly easier to operate than trucks of thirty years ago. You know, with a, with automatic transmissions and a lot of them have automatic braking and sensors and and they're quieter and they're more comfortable. So it, it's it's it, you know makes more sense than ever to uh, you know to enable eighteen year olds to get behind the wheel. Yeah, awesome. Well, listen, um, it's Avi Geller, right. Avi Geller, CEO and founder of Maven Machines. That's who we're speaking with today. Avi, are, is we're almost out of time here with you. We actually kind of got lost in time. Enjoyed this interview. Is there anything that you'd like to add uh, that we haven't talked about? No, it's great uh, being on the show with you guys, um, Troy and Ruthann, and, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity. It was great chatting with you. Yeah. Now, did you want to leave, like, your calling card? Like, uh, how do people can get a hold of you, c- contact with your company if they're interested in your product? Yeah. Like Go ahead. If you're interested in learning more about our technology uh, for fleet management, um, uh, telematics and, and operation software, dispatching, route optimization, things like that, uh, please reach out. Our website is mavenmachines.com, M-A-V-E-N machines. And my email is avi at mavenmachines.com. Love to hear from you. And that's Avi, A-V-I. That's right, A-V-I. Well, Avi, thank you so much for coming on the show. Stay in touch and come on again. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, we'll take care now. Take care. And that was Avi Geller again with Maven Machines. That was an interesting interview. I really I was interested in some of that stuff that he came on because a lot of those things are driver concerns Yeah. when it comes to what's going to take my job and blah, blah, blah. I really believe that my generation and up, by the time autonomous trucks come along, it really will be for that younger generation if you really think about it. Yeah, and they're going to be the ones that are, are more apt to understand and the accept. equipment that's needed to still run them because they're going to be, they're still going to be needing someone with the, with the, like a tech head to be able to do that. Yes. And you said tech, T E C H tech head. Yes, I did. Okay. I'm just making sure they didn't misunderstand <laughs> what you said. Okay. <laughs> so Ruthann, do you have, um, Possible joke of the day and the word of the day before we get out of here. Hey, let me, let's do a, a couple, if we can. We didn't even do any of our sponsors. Let's mention a couple of them real quick. National Carriers, it's 888-311-7076. National Carriers has awesome brand new Kenworth T680s. They're looking for lease purchase drivers, students, and solos. Regional work, 888-311-7076. Ruth Ann? Um, we have Load Smart. Load Smart has Camion's break even calculator. You go and take a look at that at camion.io backslash talk CDL. Takes you right to it. It's a free download. Check it out. See what they have to offer you as far as getting the best out of your running. That's right. Camion's break even calculator by Load Smart. Want to know when you're. Uh, driving enough miles to break even with your fixed and variable cost. Download Camion's free ba- break-even calculator at Camion. That's K-A-M-I-O-N dot I-O forward slash talk CDL. Check that free calculator out, drivers. Even if you're a company driver and you're interested in becoming a lease purchase driver, check out that calculator because it'll show you exactly where your profit's at. And it integrates with all different softwares, uh, your ELD system. Um, it's There's no more copying and pasting. It integrates with all your tools like load boards, accounting, fuel cards, all that stuff. Check them out. Again, Camion, K-A-M-I-O-N dot I-O forward slash talk C-D-L. Ruthann, Carter Lumber also. We've got Carter Lumber. If you have a Class A or a Class B uh, C-D-L and you're looking to become a local home everyday driver, go to carterlumber.com forward slash talk C-D-L and fill out their small application for a local home everyday job today. J.J. Keller.
Chucker's secretary. Yes. 888-601-2017. There's lots of new updates that the taxes are, the government's doing with the taxes right now with your peer diem. You want to know what it is. They will help you. Yes. And go ahead and call JJ Keller and find out why Ruth Ann calls them the Chucker's secretary at 888-601-2017. I promise you, you'll think you have a secretary working for you. So, Ruth Ann? You got a joke of a day for I us? have some information. What's the information? Okay, so an estimated $58 million is loose change left behind on airplanes each year. What? Yeah, I know, right? Get the frog out of here. Yeah. $58 million. Yeah. You, know, it's, you know what's really funny? Hmm. I started doing it. You know, like back in the day, and I, I'm not making fun of homeless people, but back in the day when homeless people were thriving everywhere... You would find them at like drive throughs grabbing the change that people drop. Mm -hmm. You know, like at McDonald's, like they'll be like quarters fall and then they'll walk by and grab some quarters or whatever the case. So I started looking down when I go to a drive through now. I'm not kidding you. There's always change on the ground. Like mm -hmm. if you want to make money, you could probably go to McDonald's, get a 69. Well, are they 69 cents anymore? I have I, no idea. I don't know. No, the burgers, they're over a dollar now. Wow. Yeah. Well, they last a long time. Remember that guy kept one in his closet for 25 years. So oh. it's worth a dollar. If your burger is going to last a whole 25 years, you know, it's probably worth a dollar. But anyways. You just shove it in your pocket somewhere. If you're needing change the next time, go to the drive-thru and open your door. You could probably grab some change. It's, it's amazing. So but the airplanes, mm -hmm. $58 million. No way. Yeah, it says um, it's been estimated that as much as $58 million is left behind on airplanes every year. A pricely sum, to be sure, but one of them, one that makes sense when you remember how many people are often in the air at any given time in an average year. The FAA handles more than 16 million flights, which is to say that you probably won't become a millionaire by looking through the seats. But it says that um, a glo global air passenger traffic dropped 61% in 2020 thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic but they're, they're expecting it to go back up for 2024. A great deal of loose change never even makes it off the ground. Nearly $1 million was left behind in security bins in 2018. So mm. in 2020, $1 million. $1 million. All right, joke uh, of the day. Mm -hmm. Joke of the day. Joke of the day. You got one? I am. I got to get to it, though. Okay. Why do you put peanut butter in the road? Why do you put, why do you, just tell me. It goes good with traffic jam. <laughs> <laughs> Wacko. <laughs> traffic jam. Okay, okay, talk to me about the word of the day by Word Genius. Check out Word Genius. It made Ruth Ann smarter. It and did. It didn't make me smarter. He's just not listening. I'm That's just why. Not that smart. Okay. He puts his blocker on. Okay, go ahead. Ready? Sure. Titivate. Titivate? Titivate. T I D A V A T E. T I T. I V A T E. Titivate. Titivate. <laughs> Good. Make small enhancing alterations to something. Make oneself look attractive. 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 Attract attractive. Attract <laughs> attractive. Attractive. Wow. I had the traffic jam. So, <laughs> so titivate means what again? To make small enhancing alterations to something. The seamstress was able to titivate the gown. Betty wanted to titivate herself before the reception. So it's kind of just like, you know, like just yeah. freshening up, okay. titivating. Perfect. So, Miss Ruthann, I think it's time for us to get out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.